So I decided to go out on a hike here around the Hollywood Mountains and to uh, just spend a day in the sun and stopping here and there and doing some contemplation and some reading. And for my passage today, I was looking at a description, another description in the Bhagavatam about what it is to be realized, what it is to know God or to know the divine. He says here, <clears throat> when you have gained knowledge and wisdom, you can feel your unity with all embodied beings. When you know the self and you find delight in the self, you are free from all limitations. You will go beyond both good and evil. Good actions will proceed from you without any thought of merit, and you will desist from evil action naturally and not through a sense of evil. A friend to all, poised, established in knowledge and wisdom, seeing me, God, as the self of the universe, you will overcome grief and attain to freedom. Now, this is a wonderful ideal. It's something that you know you can just feel inside the longing that we have for that condition of absolute freedom, of knowledge and wisdom, being a friend to all. But the part that I've really chosen to really think about today is this wonderful verse here where he says, you can go beyond both good and evil. So you'll no longer be breaking the world into two halves, good people, bad people, good things, bad things. You know, that dual throng that's everywhere. You'll no longer be, uh, be controlled by that or have to be, you know, prohibited from things and authorized to other things. There won't be that external authority, you know, that, that keeps you penned in from the places that your imagined desires are trying to take you. But the beautiful part of it is right here when he says that good actions will proceed from you without any thought of merit. So you'll do good things, not because you're trying to be good, not because you want the merit of doing these good things, not because you want the recognition of being good, not because you feel obligated, but they flow from you because it's finally you arriving at what you are, that that nature of love comes out, that nature of intelligence is holding that steering wheel. You know, that, that, that inner joy of being is awake and alive and coloring everything that is. And so it's this very natural progression. It's not a calculated thing. It doesn't have anything to do with analysis. It's naturally being what you are, which is of God of that image of God, that love inside, that Satchitananda. And then he says, you, not only that, but you're going to desist from evil or wrong actions naturally, and not through a sense of evil, that you won't do wrong things, not because you know they're wrong and you shouldn't do them, not because you've controlled yourself and, and from doing all the evil that you want to do. That's our condition under delusion when we're living in imagination and not in reality. But in reality, evil actions are avoided simply because they're against our nature, simply because they're not pleasurable, simply because we've known their nature, we've sussed out through discernment and discrimination that they are not our desire. That when we have pursued those things, we pursued them because of imagination. We imagined something in them that would be lasting. Because that's the nature of desire, you know, the, we, we at, at a very early age in our spiritual life, or even when we're without spiritual life, desire seems the end all of existence. It seems the reason that we're here, to look for pleasure, to look for enjoyment, to, to sate our quest for, you know, adventure or to fulfill curiosity. That seems like it's the thing to do. And if it was, we would find satisfaction in that, a lasting satisfaction. But the scriptures are very adamant about the fact that everything is so temporary and so passing and that all the fulfillment of our desires through the body, mind, and senses, the only thing that does is, is wet our whistle for more to increase our hunger. But the impetus for that desire is holy. We are looking for that infinite peace. We are looking for an infinite ecstasy. We are looking for that lasting bliss because we know it. We know it because it's of our nature. That's why we can't get rid of that persistent sound that calls us toward these things. 
And because we assume we're a body and we're a mind, we go through those junctions in order to try and reach that bliss, to try and reach that contentment, that security, that happiness. But in fact, it's going inward that will teach us. There's another wonderful scripture here where he says to us, development of the power of introspection enables one to feel the reality of my existence, to feel the reality of the existence of the divine, of God. You see, God isn't out here. There's really nothing out here. Out there is all a projection of the consciousness that is within you. It requires that consciousness to be perceived. And it's that consciousness reflected back to you to see the divine, to see the source of all beauty, the source of all wonder, of all existence, is to go inside, to go internal, where the source of that consciousness is that's being reflected back to the senses in the material world. So if you do that introspection, if you find that silence within, well, that's where God is. That's why it's so hard for the materialist to find, or for any of us that are outgoing, that are going to our senses and, and to our mind for our enjoyment. So look within, find that beauty within, and enjoy that self, that divine bliss that has always been yours, will always be yours, and cannot be taken away 